Imagine a pair of arms, each over eight feet long, ending in three of the most terrifying claws ever shaped by nature. Each one, a bony scythe nearly a meter in length, longer than a samurai's sword, and lethally sharp. What kind of creature would wield such weapons? Your mind immediately pictures a predator, a hyper-carnivore perhaps, one that used these nightmarish hooks to pin down and disembowel its prey. This was the image that haunted paleontologists when they first tried to make sense of Therizinosaurus, the scythe lizard. It belonged to the theropods, the great dynasty of two-legged carnivores that gave us Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus rex. But as more evidence surfaced, the picture of a vicious killer began to crumble. The anatomy didn't match. The body was all wrong. The clues pointed not to a hunter, but to a plant eater, a giant feathered pot-bellied herbivore with the claws of a monster. This is the central paradox of Therizinosaurus, the dinosaur that breaks all the rules. How did a member of a famously carnivorous family tree evolve into a peaceful giant? And if not for killing, what on earth were those claws for? For years, those colossal claws were a mystery locked in stone. The initial fossils were so bizarre and incomplete that the first hypothesis, proposed by Soviet paleontologist Evgeny Malif, was wildly off the mark. He speculated they belonged to a gigantic 40-foot-long diving reptile, similar to a turtle, which used the blades to harvest seaweed. The truth, however, would come not just from Mongolia, but from neighboring lands, in the form of smaller, more ancient cousins. The puzzle of Therizinosaurus wouldn't be solved by finding more of the giant itself, but by discovering its extended family. The first major breakthrough was a creature called Alxosaurus. While smaller, it possessed the same distinctive long neck and, crucially, similar hand claws. But the real Rosetta Stone for this whole bizarre dynasty was unearthed from the famous fossil beds of China's Yixian formation, Bapiaosaurus. This fossil was a revelation. Not only did it have the telltale claws and a similar body shape, but it was preserved with unmistakable evidence of primitive shaggy feathers. Suddenly, the pieces clicked into place. By studying these more complete skeletons, paleontologists could finally connect the dots. The giant Mongolian claws didn't belong to a turtle. They belonged to a dinosaur, and not just any dinosaur. The story told by the bones, from the structure of the hips to the three-toed feet, pointed to one unbelievable conclusion. Therizinosaurus was a theropod. It was a member of the same dinosaur group as the most terrifying predators to ever walk the earth from Velociraptor to Tyrannosaurus rex. The picture was finally coming into focus, a creature over 30 feet long and weighing up to five tons. It walked on two powerful legs but wasn't built for speed it had a surprisingly small skull perched on a long, slender neck, a massive, wide gut, and, as its relatives suggested, it was likely covered in a coat of primitive feathers. The mystery of what it looked like was solved. But in its place, a much deeper paradox emerged. Why would a member of a legendary family of killers evolve a body so completely unsuited for the hunt? To be a theropod is to come from a line of butchers. For 150 million years, they were the undisputed top carnivores of planet Earth. So when science confirmed Therizinosaurus was one of them, the assumption was that it must be a predator. Just a very, very strange one. But the skeleton didn't lie. While its heritage was rooted in predation, its body told a story of complete evolutionary rebellion. The first clue was the skull. It was disproportionately small for a five-ton animal, and it lacked the powerful bite force and reinforced structure needed to wrestle with struggling prey. Inside that mouth, the teeth were all wrong. 
Instead of the dagger-like serrated blades of a tyrannosaur, they were small, almost peg-like, and leaf-shaped, perfectly designed not for slicing flesh, but for stripping vegetation from branches. Then there was the body. Therizinosaurus was built less like a cheetah and more like a gorilla. Its enormous, wide hips and deep rib cage created a massive gut cavity. This wasn't the lean, athletic frame of a hunter. It was the body of a giant, walking fermenter, built to house an extensive digestive system necessary to break down colossal amounts of tough plant matter. Even its feet were adapted. Unlike most theropods that balanced on three toes, Therizinosaurus had shifted its posture to rest its weight on four, a common adaptation for heavy-bodied, slow-moving herbivores. Fossils of its relatives, like the feathered Nothronicus from North America, have even been found with polished gastroliths, stomach stones swallowed to help grind fibrous vegetation in a gizzard. The evidence was overwhelming. This dinosaur had betrayed its carnivorous ancestry. It was a full-blown herbivore. This makes Therizinosaurus one of the great outliers of the dinosaur world. It was a testament to evolution's power to find new opportunities, to take a blueprint for a killer, and radically redesign it for a peaceful existence. But this peaceful image creates an even sharper, more pressing question. If it spent its days browsing on trees, why was it armed with the most terrifying claws in the entire animal kingdom? So if not for killing, what was the purpose of these incredible claws? The answer is likely not one thing, but many. They were the ultimate multi-tool, adapted for a life that required both the gentle harvesting of food and the terrifying threat of extreme violence. While they look like weapons, biomechanical studies suggest they were surprisingly delicate for their size. The long, slender blades would have been ill-suited for the immense stress of actively slashing at struggling prey. A misplaced strike against bone could have easily fractured them. Their primary function was likely far more mundane and far more critical to its daily survival. They were for eating. Picture this five-ton giant with its broad hips providing a stable, tripod-like base as it reared up. It could use its surprisingly long arms to reach high into the forest canopy. The claws become giant hooks used to grasp and pull down large branches, bringing nutritious leaves within reach of its small, beaked mouth. It was a high browsing strategy, an effective way for a massive animal to access a food source beyond the reach of its competitors. But that doesn't mean they weren't dangerous. A tool for pulling branches can also be a weapon of defense. And in its world, Therizinosaurus needed defending. A slow-moving, conspicuous animal like this would have been a tempting target for the apex predator of its time. Cornered, Therizinosaurus could have presented a terrifying wall of waving scythes it wouldn't need to be an agile fighter. A single, well-placed swipe would be enough to deter almost any attacker, inflicting a grievous wound that could cripple a predator for life. The claws were a powerful and unambiguous message. I am not easy prey. Finally, such spectacular features in nature rarely evolve without a social component. Like the elaborate antlers on a moose, the sheer size and condition of the claws may have served as a visual display to ward off rivals or to attract a mate. In the end, the claws of Therizinosaurus were not the simple tools of a murderer, but the complex keys to its survival, a combination of a fork, a shield, and a billboard, allowing this peaceful giant to thrive in a dangerous world. To truly understand this animal, we have to see it not as an isolated fossil, but as a living creature in its own world. That world, 70 million years ago, was the Nemegt formation of modern-day Mongolia. Forget the arid Gobi Desert we see today. This was a lush, wet oasis, a vast floodplain carved by winding rivers 
and covered in dense forests of conifers and flowering trees. It was a world teeming with life, and Therizinosaurus was just one of its incredible inhabitants. It shared this paradise with some of the largest herbivores of its time. Towering above the canopy were the long-necked titanosaurs, like Nemegtosaurus, stripping the highest leaves. Down below, heavily armored tanks, like the Ankylosaur Cycania, browsed on low-growing ferns, protected by a shell of bony plates and a formidable tail club. Great herds of duck-billed hadrosaurs, such as Saurolophus, moved through the forests, their distinctive calls echoing through the trees. In this bustling community, Therizinosaurus carved out its own unique niche, a specialist high browser using its bizarre claws to harvest food in a way no other dinosaur could. But every Eden has its serpent. The shadow hanging over this vibrant world belonged to a seven-ton apex predator, Tarbosaurus batar. A close cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex, this was the undisputed king of the Nemegt. With a skull full of railroad spike teeth, it was perfectly equipped to hunt the giant herbivores it lived alongside. It's easy to imagine the tension of an encounter, the lumbering Tarbosaurus sizing up a potential meal, only to be met by the calm, defensive posture of a Therizinosaurus presenting an impenetrable fence of meter-long claws. For millions of years, this dynamic balance held. The herbivore thrived, the predator hunted, and the ecosystem flourished. Therizinosaurus wasn't an evolutionary mistake or a lonely freak. It was a successful and integrated part of one of the last great dinosaur dynasties on Earth. A final, spectacular burst of evolutionary creativity. But this entire world, this complex and beautiful web of life was living on borrowed time. The world of Therizinosaurus was stable, but the universe was not. 66 million years ago, a threat emerged for which no amount of evolutionary adaptation could have prepared it. It was an asteroid, six miles wide, traveling at over 40,000 miles per hour. Its target, the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico. The impact was an event of unimaginable violence, releasing the energy of billions of atomic bombs in a single, catastrophic moment. The immediate effects were apocalyptic. A blast wave of superheated air and rock incinerated vast landscapes. Global earthquakes shook the planet to its core, and colossal tsunamis ravaged the world's coastlines. For the dinosaurs of the Nemegt, thousands of miles away, the first sign would have been a sky on fire, followed by a rain of superheated debris igniting the lush forests that had sustained them for millions of years. But the real killer was the aftermath. The pulverized rock and soot from global wildfires were blasted into the high atmosphere, creating a thick, dark shroud that enveloped the planet. The sun was blotted out. Photosynthesis on a global scale ground to a halt. This was the impact winter, and for the inhabitants of the Nemegt, it was a death sentence. The green world that fueled the entire ecosystem simply died. For a five-ton herbivore like Therizinosaurus, which needed to consume hundreds of pounds of vegetation every single day, the end would have been swift. Its specialization, once its key to success, became its undoing. There were no more leaves to pull from the branches. As the great plant eaters starved, the predators that hunted them, like Tarbosaurus, soon followed. The entire magnificent structure of the late Cretaceous ecosystem collapsed from the bottom up. For all its unique defenses, Therizinosaurus could not evolve a solution to a world without sunlight. It vanished, along with every other non-avian dinosaur closing the book on one of the most incredible dynasties in Earth's history. So we return to our central mystery, the dinosaur that shouldn't exist. Therizinosaurus began as a riddle of bone, a set of terrifying claws that suggested a monster. But the truth was far more profound. It was a theropod that abandoned its predatory heritage, 
a testament to the fact that evolution's path is never a straight line. It reminds us that the script of life is unwritten and that a family of killers can produce a gentle giant. Therizinosaurus shatters our preconceived notions of what a dinosaur should be, proving that nature's creativity will always be wilder than our imagination. It is the ultimate evolutionary masterpiece, a beautiful paradox written in bone. If you found this look at one of evolution's strangest experiments inspiring, subscribe for more stories from our planet's incredible deep past.